Hello, I'd like to welcome all of you participating in this course for this presentation on the clinical diagnosis of arbovirus infections. Uh, I don't have any disclosure to, to state on, related to this topic. And I'd like to thank the organizing committee for inviting me for uh, this presentation. Well, the arbovirus, uh, currently more than 500 have been identified. Nearly uh, 150 are associated with human infection. And in the last decade, uh, around five have emerged or re-emerged in both hemispheres. Yellow fever, dengue, Zika, West Nile, and chikungunya. Uh, and uh, because they have uh, similar seasonality also, in some places like occurred in Brazil, we had some, in some regions triple epidemics of this virus. Uh, four of them, uh, of the Flaviviridae family, yellow fever, dengue, Zika, and in the Togaviridae, family, chikungunya, uh, they share the same vector of transmission, which is the Aedes uh, mosquitoes, the genus Aedes. Here I, I put some main, the main problems in the clinical diagnosis of arboviruses, uh, because uh, they have, uh, first of all, they have similar clinical presentation. There is no pathognomonic sign. To, it's impossible to diagnose specifically uh, which one of them uh, just by the clinical presentation. Also, they have, as I mentioned before, uh, similar seasonality, uh, which means that uh, co-infections may occur. All of them may be life-threatening, we have severe cases in around 10%, sometimes up to 20% of the uh, arbovirus infections uh, may be severe. Uh, most of them have a, a high proportion of asymptomatic cases, and sometimes it's difficult to, uh, there is a delay in uh, the identification of the, uh, an outbreak, due to the circulation of the virus and, and the, the occurrence of asymptomatic cases that are, there is a delay in the diagnosis. And also they can be transmitted by other sources, not only by vector, uh, such as blood, for instance. Uh, which means that uh, we have to have it's crucial to have a well-trained staff to know how to uh, approach this kind of patient. This, this staff uh, has to be aware of the local epidemiology and the occurrence of uh, outbreaks or if there is a, it's an endemic area, uh, the seasonality of the, these viruses. Uh, also, it's important to have a good infrastructure to, for adequate assistance, fast and adequate assistance of severe cases. And uh, as I mentioned, there's also non-vector transmission. So this means that uh, this type of infection may occur, occur in non-endemic areas. For instance, uh, uh, patients from the North Hemisphere or countries that don't have these uh, arbovirus infections uh, endemically, but had traveled to endemic areas and they return with fever. And sometimes uh, this, there is a delay in the diagnosis because the, the staff is not trained to recognize the symptoms. It's important to highlight that uh, Arbovirus infections are febrile syndromes. So uh, 
all these syndromes may occur in arbovirus infections. Uh, Febrile syndrome, exanthematous syndrome, hemorrhagic syndrome, abdominal pain, painful syndrome, syndrome shock syndrome, and also uh, syndromes that uh, uh, suggest involvement of the central nervous system. In each of these syndromes, there is a bunch of uh, disease that may occur. So it's uh, impossible uh, the diagnosis of only by the clinical symptoms or presentation. Uh, in bold, I, I highlighted the arbovirus infections that are, can be uh, diagnosed in all these syndromes. In the left side of this slide, I'm showing the proportion of uh, symptomatic cases that uh, occurs in, in, in some of the most frequent arbovirus infections and that uh, occur at least here in Brazil. Uh, dengue virus, more than 75% are asymptomatic. Zika virus, 80% in the last epidemics uh, studies in blood bank uh, show that a disproportion of asymptomatic patients West Nile, we don't have here in Brazil uh, frequently, uh, but uh, the frequency of uh, asymptomatic cases is also high. So except by chikungunya, the less asymptomatic cases, uh, also yellow fever, we can have up to 65% of cases are asymptomatic. So, uh, and when they are symptomatic, you can see in this uh, table, that they share uh, common symptoms like fever, myalgia, uh, the presence of rash, conjunctivitis, headache, vomiting, jaundice, and other symptoms that are, may occur in, 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 in both, in all of them. So uh, except for some symptoms uh, such as, uh, for instance, Conjunctivitis that is more frequent occurs more frequently in Zika infections, or jaundice more frequently in yellow fever, or hepatomegaly in chikungunya, or the bleeding um, phenomenons that can occur in dengue and yellow fever, uh, or uh, this facial erythema also you can see more frequently in dengue. But in general, all the other symptoms are common in, in all of them. So uh, it's very difficult to define the diagnosis uh, without a specific uh, laboratory test. So all this, uh, uh, the differential diagnosis is imperative. So uh, when you have a suspect case of arbovirus infection, all of these other illnesses may occur. And uh, this uh, uh, call to attention as this uh, disease can be severe. And some patients uh, uh, had a, a bad prognosis because the, there was a delay in the treatment. So uh, the World Health Organization defined that, uh, that we have to develop better systems to early detection of these diseases. And uh, the approach was to develop uh, steps in, a, in, in establishing a syndromic surveillance uh, for the diagnose, fast diagnosis of uh, arboviral uh, diseases. And the main objectives of this the proposal was not only early detection of outbreaks and uh, clusters, 
but also to increase the sensitivity rather than specificity uh, of the surveillance to uh, rapid identification of this disease. So uh, as a first action, we have to start treating the patient while the laboratory diagnosis will confirm which one is uh, uh, we have in this case. But uh, it's Im more important to identify that is a narbovirus infection uh, and to start uh, taking actions that are, are important. So what we need is a quick response. And uh, why? Because the uh, good of the evolution of severe cases depends on these actions, the correct risk classification and a, a proper clinical management of the patient. So like uh, in movies, light camera action, we have first to define if this is a suspect case of arbovirus infection or not. Then to proceed to the risk assessment of the patient and in the risk assessment, uh, concurrently, we have other uh, steps that uh, will uh, start the, the diagnose, the specific diagnose. But uh, after risk assessment, we, uh, with the risk assessment, we can start the action. So uh, what's the case definition for syndromic surveillance? Uh, the patient with fever and at least one of these symptoms, myalgia, atrosia, a, a maculopapular rash, headache, retrobital pain, conjunctivitis, vomiting, and jaundice. So if you have fever in at least one of these other symptoms, it's defined that can be an arbovirus disease or this arbovirus infection has to be in the differential diagnosis of the case. Uh, in parallel, we have to do a good uh, anamnesis, uh, starting with the information about the beginning of the fever and the other symptoms. Uh, if the, there are some signs of a warning, uh, if the patient experiences uh, gastrointestinal changes like nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, or gastritis, also, neurological changes, it's very important because this is one of the warning signs. Uh, also, the diuresis, if the patient, uh, the kidneys are working fine. The investigation of the epidemiological risk, for instance, if there is arbovirus cases in the community or if the patient is not from an endemic area, if he had traveled to an endemic area, it's also important. And a quick check of the pre-existing conditions like uh, uh, hypertension, uh, COPD, diabetes, obesity. Um, and also what it defines uh, more risky patients are uh, if they are children be, uh, between 29 days to six months of life, adults over 65, pregnant women, and the immunocompromised host, transplant patients, HIV-infected patients, etc. Uh, at the same time, uh, after anamnesis, have to start physical examination, measuring blood pressure in two positions, sitting or lying and standing. And uh, the, the early signs of severity are hypotension, postural hypotension, or blood pressure narrowing, which means that uh, there is less than 20 millimeters of uh, mer uh, mercury uh, between the, the systolic and diast diastolic pressure. Uh, access the general status of the patient, and the, the grade of uh, hydration, perfusion, arterial pulse, temperature, 
and respiratory frequency. Check for the presence of warning signs. I'll, uh, in the next slides, I'll show which are the warning signs. Uh, the presence of bleeding, uh, and if they are not uh, evident, uh, do the, the tourniquet test to, to check for uh, bleeding. And the, the, the presence of comorbidities, as I have already mentioned in the slide before. So if you, after checking all these items, uh, this is the tourniquet, tourniquet test. You can do uh, for two to five minutes, and then you count uh, in a calculate a, uh, a square of at least two and a half centimeters. And, uh, and count in this area the number of petechia. And then there's a positive test. You can compare with the other arm. And after the inflating the cuff here, the appearance of petechia, showing that there is a, this is a positive test. And how to perform the risk classification? So first question, um, the criteria for defining a uh, suspect case was fulfilled. So they have fever in one of the symptoms. Yes, if you answer yes, you have to proceed immediately to the second more important question that will most of times save the life of the patient. Are there signs of shock or severe organ dysfunction? Are there warning signs? And uh, the, the possibility of bleeding that I evaluate by the presence of petechia. Uh, and, and also the other risk factors that are comorbidities or special clinical conditions or if there is a social risk. This is also increases the likelihood of uh, uh, bad evolution of the cases. And then according to this, uh, the, the answer to these questions, you define the group of the patients. So if the patient has just uh, uh, yes for the first question, no signs of shock, no warning signs, no petechia, etc. cetera, you, this is group A. This is no, no emergency, no urgency. The patient can wait to be assisted. If they have signs of shock or severe organ dysfunction, they are classified as a D. Warning sign as C. And uh, if they have only uh, the, this uh, last one in green, this classified as B. So all the, the basic health um, Unities that the the the, the staff has to be trained to to do this uh, risk classification. So and then uh, uh, what they have to do, as I mentioned, it's just a medical assistant according to arrival time. No urgency, no emergency. D is emergency. They need immediate assistance. C is an urgency, they had to be assisted as soon as possible. And uh, B, no urgent priority. In case of D or C, these patients need to be admitted to a hospital. Okay, so uh, this is very important because not only defines the, the, the quick uh, response to the case, uh, starting treating, the patient and hydration, uh, but also to define the need of admission to a hospital. So these are the signs of shock, and tachycardia, cold extremities, filiform pulse, uh, the perfusion, uh, you can test the, the perfusion, uh, the, the narrowing of blood, blood pressure, as I mentioned before, less than 20 millimeters of mercury. 
tachypnea, tachypnea oliguria, hypotension, uh, cyanosis, uh, with or without hemorrhagic manifestations. So even, even if the patient has no sign of bleeding, but they have any other of these signs, this is signs of shock and is characterized as D and has to have uh, immediate assistance. Uh, now uh, I'd like to highlight some warning signs in the most common arbovirus that we have uh, in, in Brazil, for instance. Dengue. Warning signs for dengue. Abdominal pain, persistent vomiting, mucosal bleeding, fluid accumulation, pleura or pericardial effusion, ascites, liver enlargement over two centimeters, lethargy, and a progressive increase in hematocrit. These are uh, warning signs of dengue. For yellow fever, uh, as you can see, I, I put in bold some warning systems, uh, warning signs that are, are common to other uh, arbovirus infections. So no matter which one is, when you see one of these uh, symptoms, uh, they are warning signs for most, many of them. So you have to take action. Um, in case of yellow fever, nausea, vomiting, again, abdominal pain, somnolence, bleeding, neurological involvement, seizures, oliguria. So all uh, symptoms that uh, suggest involvement of central nervous system is warning sign. So we have to take action. For chikungunya, chikungunya also, persistent vomiting, spinae, chest pain, mucosal bleeding, not only yellow fever or dengue can have bleeding, chikungunya also, neurological involvement, shock signs also in chikungunya, uh, hemodynamic instability, if there is the neonate, it's important, and uh, if you uh, have any decompensation of underlying disease, these are warning signs for chikungunya. So any of these signs, even if you have you don't have uh, the specific diagnosis already, uh, you have to take action and start uh, managing man the management of these patients uh, clinically. So. Uh, Concurrent steps in the investigation, in the clinical diagnosis of uh, arbovirus infections. Take a, a hemogram. It's recommended in group A, but it's mandatory in groups B, C, or D. So if patient only have symptoms, fever, and one more of those symptoms, arthralgia, myalgia, it's recommended to have a hemogram, but any other sign, it's, it's crucial and mandatory. So we have to have an hemogram to analyze uh, all the other para parameters. If there is a suspect, uh, if you suspect of yellow fever, have also to collect uh, liver function with AST, ALT, bilirubins, urea, creatinine, sodium, potassium, protrombin time uh, to check for liver function. In parallel, you run the specific laboratory diagnosis, which is the, the main focus of this course. Uh, but you will never take the, the test and wait for the results. You start acting and uh, treating the patient. And then later, when you have the result, you adjust the, the, the treatment according to the diagnosis. And uh, immediately start hydration. This is the key in the treatment of arbovirus infection. So, it's the most important thing to do. Uh, uh, 
in parallel, you can also uh, prescribe and start treating of the symptoms, like uh, uh, the fever and pain with an paralytic and analgesic. Uh, have to avoid the salicylates and non-hormonal anti-inflammatories. If the patient is vomiting or with nausea, start antimedic or antihistaminic, or if they have severe joint pain, uh, rest and cold compresses in joints. So, the, according to the, the the symptom presentation, just to really uh, have the patient has some relief of the the symptoms. Also, uh, there is a definition for uh, the hospital admission criteria. This is changes according to country, but uh, in general, the presence of alarm signs. If the patient don't, doesn't risk, uh, accept uh, food or liquids, it's another indication. Uh, it's it's hard to keep hydration if the patient is not eating or drinking, so have to be admitted. Uh, if they have any respiratory impairment or uh, like chest pain, dyspnea, decrease of vesicular breath sound and other signs of severity. <coughs> Sorry. It's another indication for hospitalization. Number of the, the, the platelets uh, below 2,000 to uh, 20,000 per millimeter even if the patient has, hasn't any sign of uh, bleeding, but uh, this uh, number is dangerous, so have to be admitted to the hospital. Uh, the comorbidities, the compensate of comorbidities, such as diabetes, arterial hypertension, heart failure, whatever comorbidity they have, if they have a discompensation of the comorbidity, they have to be admitted to the hospital. And also there are some uh, social reasons to admit the patient. For instance, the impossibility to follow or return to the health unit to be uh, re-evaluated. So sometimes it's better the patient lives too far or cannot have any condition to return in the next two days. So uh, it's better to admit the patient and have uh, the, the follow-up of this patient closer. And uh, any other situation that uh, the, the cl clinician will define, uh, that uh, the, uh, the, the clinician consider that it is important to have the patient uh, inside the hospital, not as an outpatient. Uh, in conclusion, the arbovirus illnesses uh, constitute a group of uh, febrile syndromes uh, that may include several diseases. So there is no clinical diagnosis of uh, arbovirus, specific arbovirus infection, just for the clinical examination of the patient. So. Uh, the diagnosis depends on uh, serology, PCR, other tests to confirm, but does not mean that I don't have to do anything and wait for the test. No, you take action first and treat as a syndrome, uh, uh, surveillance of these syndromes and start acting independent of which arbovirus infection it is. And this is the best strategy for the clinical diagnosis of arbovirus infections. The syndromic approach followed by the use of management algorithms, as I, I show here, and start treatment protocols, uh, which is the, the risk assessment and start uh, taking the other uh, laboratory exams and start hydration and, and symptomatics and until the, the definition of the case by the specific diagnosis. 
And of course, uh, for all these reasons, uh, a trained staff at primary care unit is, is critical for the correct risk stratification and prompt intervention in severe cases, and in, in mild and moderate cases also to, to better conduct the case uh, to the specific diagnosis. And I, I thank you for your attention, and I'll be glad to answer uh, questions uh, during the course. Thank you.